How you doing everyone? Welcome back. We're here for our Sunday games wrap up and I just want to start by saying there's going to be a bunch of lessons learnt in these couple of games and if you want to learn a few more just jump back into our last few videos. We've got the Thursday night wrap up, the Friday, the Saturday and also our Sunday games and I get a lot of comments in, in some of these videos about a bunch of those games and a bunch of those players so the best thing for you to do is to jump in. I actually go through every relevant player in each of those games and that might help you with answering those questions so definitely make sure i cover everyone that's you know semi-relevant um, in those so please jump in and have a look at those and uh hopefully that answers a bunch of those que questions and, and just in case i happen to miss any of your comments uh you can that will help be able to help you out there but I'll jump into this knights and tigers game and it was actually a pretty good game of footy knights sort of just struggled the whole the whole time they well, completed 84 percent and 92 percent the first couple of games and i think you know back near the end of the game they were had 13 errors or something stupid so uh that definitely helped the tigers in being able to win this one but i'm going to start with our first lesson and good god it's good to see uh mr alex twile up the the top of this top of this ladder with 70 points so i had a bunch of people asking me if they should get rid of twile and i thought there were some pretty silly questions those one just yeah, why would you be thinking of getting rid of him? He was averaging just over 50, and that's where he's priced at, right? So he's a gun, you know, maybe a lower end gun if if he's going to be averaging just over 50. But we all, all have so many other issues in our squad. Someone like Twal is just that guy that you just plug in and you just let him do his thing. And I was telling people that you know he was playing low 50s minutes, and if he happened to get any more minutes in some games, if there was an injury or if or if they just need him to play a bit longer, then he was going to be that guy. And he has such a great point points per minute that if he gets 60 to 70 minutes that he's going to get you know 60 to 70 points and he kind of just had the perfect game this one so another another example where 49 tackles ended up with two turnover tackles so really good work for him one tackle break and 100 and, uh, 103 meters so no no negatives on his part yesterday which was amazing and nets you a 70 points and there's going to be people this week that are trying to bring him in so don't uh don't be stressing about these types of players they if they're at least hitting their price and they're close to a gun price there then you've got to keep them and and deal with other you know issues in your squad and we move down and connor watson absolutely belter how good is he we love connor <laughs> started at 323 he's already up 83k he'll be up another 50 to 60 after this game for 69 and 55 minutes i really like i do really like him coming off the bench i think it really helps his game and he's been awesome that this i think this is very much the same as um jaden braley the first game where he actually missed some tackles and that was right at the end when tigers were throwing the ball around and Nofaluma is running sideways and all that sort of stuff. So, awesome mode, like really tackling hard in the middle. And this was his biggest game in terms of meters, which netted you know six tackle breaks and he got a line break and, and try assist as well. So, awesome for Watson. And if he keeps this up, he could end up being a keeper coming from you know three hundred and twenty k, which is which is crazy. But obviously, you know forty six percent of teams have him, so you know nothing nothing outstanding in terms of being a pod and, and helping out your team. But you'd need to have him and and play him every week. So he's awesome. Adam Dewey got a few more attacking stats this week and also kicked for 318 metres, which was interesting for Brooks owners that Dewey seemed to be doing a lot, the, lot more of the long kicking. But 99 metres gain, just did a bit of everything, kicked the goals. Obviously, that's something to think about with Brooks as well as he got that goal kicking in round one, but won't be any more. So Dewey, probably not an option at this stage, but if he keeps up this type of scoring, then you might want to think about him. Obviously, they uh, in, in his game last week, they you know, played a strong team. And if they're playing... Yeah, more night style teams, a middle of the pack kind of squads, and he might score a bit better. I'll uh, take my hat off to to Brayley owners who uh, decided to captain him. I think it was ten percent of people that captained Brayley this week. So, well done to you. He is he the new Cameron Smith? Is he the new? Is he the new god? <laughs> How good is he? Average is seventy six point three, almost up to Reid Mane status. Wow, sixty seven. Well done to you, Captain Him. Just did everything again. Finally missed his, I think he missed his first tackle in like the 50th minute. And I was like, he is human. 53 tackles for three misses. So he's up, you know, 50 tackles every game, which that base is going to be awesome. And then any attacking stats on top of that. A few kick meters out of dummy half. Uh, almost kicked a 40-20, I believe. They probably should have given it. But anyway, uh, 67, amazing work. You need to have him in your squad. He He's already gained 142K and he's, already, he's going to be up another, like, what, 80 after this game. So incredible work from him. The Frizz just keeps doing it. This time had to score a try to get his 63. So a little bit less in base stats this week. And if he doesn't score that try, he's probably in the mid 40s, or mid to high 40s. So 
just have a think about that if you if you're rushing to get him in he won't be scoring in the 60s every week although you know when he gets a try that's going to be very helpful for him the next lesson is going to be Nofaluma. had a lot of people saying they wanted to get rid of him this week and and understandable he had a couple of low games but Nofaluma is a gun in the wing fullbacks and he has been for years right he's someone that makes a lot of meters very helpful at a dummy half does run sideways a lot and get the uh, the palm off tackle breaks and this is one of those games when he scores a try as well he can, he's someone that can get up to the you know 60 plus all the way up to 80 90 he's had games so Nofaluma is definitely a hold and it's like who do you trade him to do you, do you trade him to a, like a Latrell? yeah that's probably a you know a good player to have in your side but it's a wasted trade to go to go sideways to someone like Latrell when Nofaluma has many years of, of of averaging sort of 45 to 50 odd so Nofaluma, another one of those lessons of just sticking solid and holding there. <coughs> Mr. Pierce end up with a try in his 300th game, so good on to him. We'll we'll take a we'll take a moment to acknowledge his uh, his good career and someone that's had a crazy amount of pressure on him over the years. And and we'll say well done to you, mate. 300 games is what is that? The 42nd person to, to do that. So well done, Pierce. But uh, he's scoring really well and averaging 62, even with Man there, was a, a little bit lower if he didn't get the try at the end. So that's more of what you could expect around that 50 mark with, with Kurt there as he'll kick a little bit more uh, and Pierce will be a little bit less having more of a dominant half. But 113 run metres is going to be helpful for any any half. Glamour, another really good score at 58. So yeah, again, he's, he's going to be a keeper around that 740k mark, but there's a few other options that have that dual position that might be a little bit better. Dane Laurie, is he quickly becoming a keeper? Who knows? 48 and three, average 48 in three games. Just does a bit of everything. You know, he's got obviously got his standard like kick defuse. The odd try, the odd try save was cool. A turnover tackle in there, so he's really solid in defence, which is good. Um, you know, it's adding to his attacking prowess with five tackle breaks. Got a try assist in there, so Laurie's really cool. He could be someone similar to Connor Watson, who will make a lot of money for squads. He'll be up near 400k after this week too. So awesome work for him, and you need him in your squad. Lucy Leilua, another 50, so just hold, hovering around that point and hasn't had any attacking stats yet. So wait for the game where he gets 70-odd. If you've got him in his side, you have to leave him. Mitch Barnett ended up with a little bit of an injury and probably like was, was sitting pretty at the start and then kind of got hurt and did end up scoring a try, which helped him out. But you know, 40, 90, 80 minutes, a few people would have been hoping for a lot more. He's already 714k, so he needs to be scoring in the mid-50s to, to make him worth it as a keeper. And if he's carrying a bit of an injury after the weekend, we'll have to wait and see what's going on there. But eight missed tackles was a bit annoying for him. But yeah, at one stage, I think he was getting an offload and then missing a tackle. So he's just like, he was just taking that away. But yeah, solid game. You just hope that he's um, he's not injured and he'll be able to do a lot more work next week. Garner's in there. Utakamanu, how good was that? Nice pass from Luke Brooks, straight through the middle, looking around. Where, who am I going to pass it to? And then he's like, ah, oh, stop it. I'll, I'll take on Tex Hoy. Um, and, and carried him to the line and scored. So that's going to really bump up his, his price movements, which would be great. So he'll be up over 300K this week, which will be awesome. Average of 35.7. Still only getting that 30 minutes, which you know we're hoping for around a 30 average in that 30 minutes, but we'll take the 48 and, and bump up that price there. But really solid. And if, you've, if you have him in your squad, like a lot of people would do, then you're really happy with his uh, his price movements. Texoy actually had a really good game. I thought he would have... Um, I thought he got a few more tackle breaks, but, oh well, 47, you take that. And I think I mentioned in the preseason that for Tex, you want him to be averaging about 40 until Ponga comes back, and he'll be able to make you sort of 100 or so K. So with this 47, he'll be up around that 370, 380, which will be good for anyone who brought him in, and he's been able to help, been helpful in covering the half and the wing fullback position. So sounds like Ponga might be a, still a few weeks away. Uh, so you might get Tex for a little bit more, and, and he's, being, he's been serviceable during that time for sure. Luke Brooks with 45 and just didn't do a lot on the didn't do a lot yesterday and still scored 45 so that's that's really helpful. He has a 50 average over the first three weeks, which is exactly what we were were looking for if you if you're thinking about bringing him into your side. Very similar to what we're talking about with Christian Welch. They're both priced at 40 and you're looking for them to at least average 50 and and make you some good cash and give you some serviceable scores and, and Brooks has done that over the first three weeks and yes, Dewey's there and he's doing a little bit more work, but You'll expect games where Brooks, yeah, if this is his sort of his base, 40 to 45, and then he can have a game of 60 plus, then I think he's going to be great. And I wouldn't be trading Brooks out at all this week. Even though you've got a bunch of options there with Walker and O'Sullivan and, and Schuster, I think you just got to keep him and, 
and use some of those guys on the bench as, as some scorers if you need it. Daniel Saifidi, another another lower game to go with it. And if he hasn't got the attacking stats, then these are the types of scores you can expect with some bigger ones in there. But a 712k, not going to be an option. Kurt Mann is just going to be losing some cash as he as he scores so anywhere in the 40s for a little bit. If he can get a little bit lower, it'll be interesting to see what happens when, when Blake Green comes back, where he's going to play. Might just be end up being the utility and we'll have to keep an eye on him for maybe next year or something. James Roberts, less than number three. Don't trade a guy that has upside that will play in the centers. Who are you trading him for? If you're trading him for Opacek, if you're trading for Momorowski, yeah, okay. Are they gonna be are they gonna be that much better than what Roberts is? Yes, he played one game and didn't go what did he get nineteen the first game? Didn't play last week, but if he's if he's gonna be there playing against someone like Knights, he's gonna get you know the tackle breaks and, and he didn't have any negatives, which is good, but in the center position, it's very silly to be trading up and down very regularly. Uh, you'll see you see guys come out and, and get 61 weeks. Like I know Olam, a lot of people decide to bring Olam this week, and then he gets a lower score. So it's just it's just silly trading those guys because they rely on on you know attacking stats, and and sometimes they don't get it, and then the next game they do, and they get 50 or something. So just just look look out for that that you, you shouldn't be trading centers very regularly like that. Tamau Talao, Tommy Talao. Has lost a bit of cash, and, and this will sort of stifle that now. Jacob Little, 32 in 60 minutes. So these are the types of minutes that we'd expect. He did come on a little bit, you know, right at the end of the game. And, and for him, 42 tackles, 7 misses, and 40 metres gain. No tackle breaks, no nothing. This was kind of a, a lower game you'll expect from him. And I wouldn't be trading him this week. He's gonna he's still going to make a fair bit of cash over the next few weeks, even if he doesn't score as well. Even if he has a bunch of games in the 30s, he'll still go up a fair bit over the next bunch of weeks. So... He might peak in the next sort of three to five weeks, and then he might be a trade out then. But he's, he could also come out and score a try next week, or get a try assist or something, and and get 45 to 50 again. So I'm still thinking about playing him in my side and definitely keeping him across uh, this stage. Here we go. Lesson number four: Joel Fangawi. I did say after round one that I think his 58 would be his highest score of the year. Not, I don't think it was a great, a crazy take, but for him, he's then been moved to the interchange, which is pretty annoying for anyone who decided to bring him in that week but he's that kind of player he's not a focal point in in any in anyone's pack and yeah these are types of scores that are going to be a little bit more normal just had an amazing game round one and hasn't scored well since so anyone who brought him in and as I said these these are those lessons around that 400k mark about bringing those guys in that they have to be scoring you in the 40s at least for for them to make a lot of cash and do well for you if they have an odd game around 30, then that stifles their, their price rises. So off Hengawi, that's the story with him. And unfortunate if you decide to bring him in. It was cool to see Dom Young come in and play, the 19-year-old, but didn't have to do too much. And I don't think he's going to be scoring anything crazy, even if he gets multiple games. So we can wait and see on him at 228, even if he gets to 270, 280 over the next few weeks. If there happens to be a long-term injury, then you can think about him as he's got center and win fullback dual. Uh, who else we got there? Moses Mbai is going to be losing some cash over the next few weeks. So if there's any injuries, eventually, if he's around that 300k mark, he'll be cool to bring in. But there you go, guys. That's that. Uh, that's that first game. And if you're liking this, please uh, hit the like button and, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And we'll uh, we'll continue with these analyses if you uh, are really enjoying them. And we go to my Cowboys. What a game! How good are the Cowboys? I just love supporting them. Anyway, we move on. How good? The King, Dave Fafita, he outdid my Roger with 92. I decided to captain him in, captain him in the alternates, which was uh, very helpful. They picked up over a thousand points for the week. Thank you for that, Mr. Fafita. But how good is he in, in just in general play? You give him some early ball and you get him one-on-one -on -one with someone and he just bumps him off like he's nothing. So cool to watch. Um, if you don't have him, I think it's 28% of teams having him. So that helped. That helped me gain a bunch of ranks last night in that in that game. So thanks for that, for feeder. I was just a bit wasn't sure about captaining him in in like the main side or if, you know a bunch of us in the people squad were, were thinking that someone like Crichton would be a bit safer, and it makes sense. But against the Cowboys, it was probably a smarter option to to give him the C just because defensively they're not going to be as good, and there was a chance he could score a try, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that was that. But still very happy with his score of 92. Just did everything. Kind of, I think he's someone you just need to get in. He's still cheap too. He's going to be over six, seven, sixty, seven, seventy this week. But 
you know, he's still only priced in the mid-50s, and I think he'll be someone that averages in the 60s this year. So awesome work for him. Philip Sammy, how good was he coming back? Just did everything on that on that left side. And for those that are Kelly owners, this could have been you, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, Jamal Fergerty, a little bit annoyed that he didn't get that try assist. Pain in the ass. Exact same thing that happened to McCulloch the other week. How, how can you be there, dummy half, pass it to a guy that's two metres from the line, and he, and he falls over and, and scores, and you don't get a try assist? If he doesn't pass it to you, you don't get a try. Whatever. Um, yeah, there's, there's a bit of there's a bit of thought like, oh, you can look out the back and, and go short, and what do they give that a try assist? But if you just look straight at him and pass it to him, is it not? I don't know. Strange. But anyway, 61, we're happy with. He was 44 at the half. Obviously, he had a bunch of goal kicks, and he's a really good goal kicker. He kicked a bunch from the sideline and just looked really strong compared to when you look at uh, Barnett. Actually, that was the other thing I should have said. With Barnett, he, he got ended up losing his... um. His kicking, obviously, it might have been because he was injured, but he didn't kick as well at all. It kicked him really bad and, and might lose his um, kicking spot when, when Ponga comes back. But we'll see. We are so high on him after before this week, and then he, and then he missed him. But folks just did a bit of everything, and really encouraging that he got 61 with no attacking stats and 387 kick metres. He had close to 300 at the half, and, and it was just a bit of a slower half for him in the second one. But awesome work. I traded him in. Happy with his efforts, he'll uh, keep the same price and he's definitely a good option. If you have someone like Kiri, you could trade to him, but I'd like to keep him as a pod, please. <laughs> anyway, Tyron Peachy, if you've got him in your side, well done. Pretty cool to have a, a centre with fifty scoring 59, but did a bit of everything and got the start this week with Tino moving to the to the front row. So really interesting for him, well done. And these are the scores you're going to get, you know, up and down, 30-odd or 50-odd for an average of somewhere in the 40. So awesome work for him and he'll, he'll hold his price pretty comfortably over the next bunch of weeks. No Ford Awake had got a try with 58. It was cool for him, but only 49 minutes. He'd hoping for a little bit more. Mitch Rain doing really well in his in his limited minutes. So for 53 again, uh, minutes for 52 points was great. The next lesson, AJ Brimson. I said he'd score this week. I said he'd do all right. He uh, had, did happen to score and score twice and, and got a couple of tries just as well. But just the tackle bus, the tackle bus aren't coming at the moment. And he's someone that I think you can really just wait on and hold. Yes, he's losing some cash and he'll probably go down a little bit more, but he's someone that a bunch of people, you know, if there is if there's an injury in the wing fullback position and you've already got like Latrell, Pappy, these types of guys, and you can't go straight up to a Teddy, for example, then Brimson's going to be a guy that everyone's targeting. So if you've got him in your side, I think it's a waste to trade him out. He's going to have a game like RTS where he gets a bunch of tackle breaks and, and kills it and gets a 70 or 80 coming up soon. So I, I'd hold him. Val Holmes got to play some, spend some time at fullback and did all right. 228 metres, it's good to see him involved, but yeah, they still got smashed. So Tino with 45, so played in the front row this time and got 56 minutes, which was cool. 45 points was kind of you know, what you'd expect, and he was lucky to get a little little line break there without anyone touching him, but just annoying that he hasn't really get, been getting any attacking stats yet. And I just don't think with the Titans he's being put in the positions that he was with the Storm, and you know, to, to get one-on-one -on -one with guys. I think he's doing a lot of the hard work and, and running hard, like 180 metres is great, but he's just not getting the chance to really bulldoze over a guy or, or get a nice grubber in behind that, that Smith would do, for example. So, yeah, I think you can see him averaging somewhere in the mid-40s and don't have the upside. So if you are looking up, if you are looking to trade him out, then I'm okay if you do that. If you want to upgrade to someone that's, that's really taking a step up this year, then that's completely fine. Or if you need to downgrade him to get someone else, how good's Thompson's been? Thompson been, he's been killing it. Mitch Dunn, another score in the 40s, which again, make him a little bit more cash. But again, those guys in the 400s, they need to be averaging around that 50 to, to get big price bumps. And slide on down. Isan Masters averaging around 30, but not one to be thinking about. Robson, it's going to be starting to bleed cash now. If there's a bunch of injuries in the, in the hooking position and he gets close to 80 minutes, he's going to be a good option. But other than that, not worth it. I mean, so a few people have him, and he's just going to be sitting around that high 20s, even with a try. So that's that's a bit concerning, just not having the meters gained that he needs as a as a center to do well. And Corey Jensen, a lower score for him, 25 in the 39 minutes, just didn't have as much to do. Maybe he's on for more minutes when Titans were scoring well, and, and a lot of time standing around, maybe. But yeah, not a great one for him, and that'll stifle his uh, his price rises. Again, someone in that mid 300s to 400k mark that needs to score really well to to get those price rises and Paddy Herbert, that a lot of people were talking about preseason, just hasn't lived up to that, unfortunately. So there you go, guys. That's the uh, that's the wrap for the week. If you've got any questions, as I said, you can pop them in the comment section. But please go back and look at the other days 
that I've analyzed those teams. And I hope that really helps you out. And we'll, uh, we'll be set for a big round four, hopefully with Pap and Cleary back. We can uh, launch into the stratosphere and have a really good week. So hope you enjoyed that, guys. Uh, see you in the next one.